All right, we're back. We're on page six of notes three of Calc A and B. We're looking at um, how can we work backwards, right? From if we have acceleration, we can try to figure out velocity. If we have velocity, we can try to figure out position. We get these plus C things that are going on and we have to like find a way to solve for C. Uh, that's a really big deal. You never want to forget your plus Cs. Um, so all of those problems that we did on the previous page were called differential equation. Differential equation, literally an equation with a derivative in it. Every time you have found a derivative, you have created a differential equation as long as you've used proper notation, right? So if you had y is equal to uh, x, and then you said dy dx equals one, you just created a differential equation. It's an equation that has a derivative in it. That's all it is. One of the things you can do is try to solve differential equations. So if I tried to solve this differential equation bizarrely, uh, what do I take the derivative of to get one? Well, it's going to be x, but there could have been any constant. Look at this weird circle. Like we started out with y equals x. We took the derivative to create our differential equation. Then we just thought backwards from taking derivatives to original functions. We got y equals x, but we picked up a plus c. It's kind of weird. Um, and then we would need more information to solve for c, right? If we knew that y was equal to one when x was equal to one, we would know if c is equal to zero and kind of like the circle would be complete in this particular problem. Um, sometimes it's hard or, or just like impractical to actually solve the equation. What we have at our disposal, kind of, is something called a slope field. So the slope field is a very interesting thing. And later in the year, you're gonna spend a lot of time making them, analyzing them, looking at them. We're gonna create one now, well two actually, um, that are just, they're a little easier to create than maybe some others. Um, and we're going to look at them and just like get a feel for it, right? So this is very much a preview of things for later in the year. We're going to create a slope field for each of the following differential equations. Do what I do. Here's what you do at each of these points. So you see all these points, a point here, point here, point here, just got a lot of points, right? So at each of those points, what we're going to do, we're going to draw a little tangent segment that has the slope that the differential equation says it should have, right? The, a derivative tells you the slope of the tangent line, tells you the slope of the curve at a point. So if, if the solution, if the curve went through the point, for example, um, 1, 1, if it went through the point 1, 1, its slope when it goes through 1, 1 should definitely be 1 half. So what I'll do is at 1, 1, I'm going to draw a little segment that has a slope of 1 half. So how am I doing that? So I'm here. I'm going to aim for not there. I'm here. I'm going to aim for here, up 1 over 2. So I'm just aiming. So it'll be like this, I think. I think that's okay. Let me do this. Let's go. It's off by a little bit, but not by enough for me to care. So uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, just fill those in. I'm going to cheat or try to. Uh, I'm going to do, let me do this. Let me, let me see. Let me care, right? Give me a second to care here. Okay, so I think that has a good slope. So then I'm gonna do this, like draw a little line on it basically. Then I'm gonna delete this. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm gonna move this a little bit. So let me move it. Okay, then I'm gonna copy it and then I'm gonna paste it and move it a little bit there, I think. Then I'm gonna copy that. No, then I'm gonna copy both of them. Okay, then I'm gonna paste both of them. This is going well. Okay, then I'm gonna duplicate that. Oh man, look at me using all my resources. Okay, and then I'm gonna duplicate that. I have, a, I have a master plan here that will make this go faster. So the key thing is the slope at every point for this is one half. So I can basically just keep doing what I'm doing. I'm always getting a slope of one half. If the point, for example, negative four one was on this curve, the slope would just be one half. Every single point is gonna give you a slope of one half. And so I'm basically uh, just kind of like using that fact. Okay, now here comes a real payoff for me. It's not that big a payoff for you. Uh, I can duplicate this whole thing, I think, and then just, you know, fill it in. So like there, oh wait, I'm over too far. Like there, 
And then, oh wait, hold on. Let me duplicate both of these now. This is efficiency. Is it? I don't really know. But the key thing is, you know, just fill them in. Okay. And then I need, uh, that's not lined up. You would think I'd be better at doing simple things than I actually am. I mean, if you think I should be better at doing simple things, then thank you. I appreciate your, uh, your faith in me. Well, I accidentally moved all of them. So that's great. Get in there. Okay. Duplicate. Got it. And then how many do I need? One, two, three, I need four. So I think that this is faster than drawing all of them, but honestly, I could not really swear to that. Duplicate and put them all up here. That seems, ah, there are like little lines that pop up. I don't, you can't see them. I think you can't see them. That, that's like the best looking slope field I've ever made. Okay, but we had an advantage there. And the advantage was that the slope was the same no matter what, right? Like if you pick a point, uh, two, three, the slope's gonna be one half. Zero, five, slope's gonna be one half. Negative three, zero, slope's gonna be one. No matter what, the slope is, negative, is positive one half. Why would I say negative there? Okay, so those are our slopes no matter what for that. Um, let's try to do this one. So now our slope is always y minus two. So this is interesting. So whatever y is, we're just gonna subtract two. I'm gonna freehand this a little bit more. So uh, when y is equal to zero, if y is zero, the slope is negative two. So that's like this, like this, this, this. I actually think this is gonna take longer. Um, but whatever, right? When y is equal to zero, the slope is negative two. Now I'm gonna copy and paste that. Oh no, you know what I'll do? I'm gonna do all of them and then I'll copy the one side and paste it to the other. That's, that's my plan. When y is equal to one, the slope is negative one. Y is equal to one, the slope is negative one. So I'm just aiming over one, down one. That's like how I'm trying to get my slopes. If I can't go over one, down one, I'll go back one, up one. That's basically what you do. When y is equal to two, the slope is actually zero, which is the best slope. Anytime you have to fill in a slope field, zero is like the way to go. Um, when y is equal to three, the slope is one. So just aiming up one, over one. And then if I can't do that, I go back one, down one. When y is equal to four, the slope is two, so here I'm always going back one down two, or trying. And you're just doing your best. I mean, there's not much you can do. Um, when y is equal to five, the slope is three, which like you start to really appreciate how steep a slope of three is. It's really steep. Um, and we're gonna run into even more issues down here. When y is equal to negative one, the slope is negative three already. So I'm basically aiming right now. I'm looking at this point, and I'm aiming at this point, and good luck to me. So here, so is this fun? I don't know. It's kind of like calming, uh, and then it's just gonna be so extreme. Negative two gives me negative four, which is like even steeper, and you know, it's just gonna keep getting worse. Negative six might as well be infinity, negative infinity. Negative eight is like steeper still. I bet none of these are right. I mean, what, what would I need to do? I would need to go from, from uh, here to here. I would need to aim for that. Like, it's not, not really humanly possible to do it. And then negative nine, like, come on. So you just do your best. Um, and also, this is, like, this is so many things. Like, you almost never do this many when you're really doing slope fields. But at each point, you're just finding the slope of what would be the solution curve. So what I'm gonna do, this should work, I think. I'm gonna duplicate, oh God, I moved all of them. I'm gonna duplicate this, move it over here, and paste it so that at the very least, my work is consistent. Um, is it right? Yeah, it's good enough, good enough for me. Uh, so these are my slope fields. So what are we looking at when we look at a slope field? You're looking at a picture of all the possible solutions. So for example, uh, the curve that goes through one zero, well that curve 
should always have a slope of one half, which means that it should look like this. That is the solution curve passing through one zero. If I look at, uh, I don't know, negative two, two. Well, it should always have a slope of one half because every point on this curve, the slope is just one half. So it's gonna look like this. So by having my slope field, I can kind of see what the solutions are gonna look like. Now it gets weirder over here. So there's one solution that I think you can definitely see. And that is it like, you know, if we start here at one zero, that one zero at one two, if y is equal to two, the slope is always zero. So as soon as you get there, you're just gonna go straight across and then straight this way somehow. And we get that. So it looks like y equals two is just a solution to this. Um, and all we're doing is we're looking at potential solutions. So if I started here, for example, well, I can't just like let the app put in the little lines, but it looks like it would kind of go like this. I have a very Zen approach to these. I, I like to think of them as flowing water and you're gonna drop something in the water and you're just gonna like see where it goes. You know, like we drop something, drop something here. I guess I totally moved this at some point accidentally because none of those are hitting the point, but that's okay. If I drop something here, it's just gonna kind of like go this way. If it goes back, it'll probably do this. You know, just follow the path of the water. Um, so we're looking at pictures of possible solutions. It's gonna be a much bigger deal later on, but let's look at these problems. So based on the slope field for dy dx equals one half, what are all the possible solutions to differential equation have in common? I think they're all lines. So all solutions are lines with slope one half. That's what the slope field looks like to me, right? Just pick up that blue line and move it wherever you want. It's still gonna satisfy the slope field. They're all lines that have a slope of one half. So then the particular solution passing through the point negative one, two, just means like, what is the solution that goes through the point one, uh, negative one, two? So that would have to be y equals, well, I'm gonna point slope it. y minus two equals one half, and then x minus negative one, so plus one. Or y equals two plus one half x plus one. This is all a preview of things that you're going to do. So, you know, take it in, look at it, think about it, Think of ways that you could maybe generate slope fields other than spending half your life. Um, so based on the slope field for dy dx equals uh, y minus two, what line appears to be a solution to the differential equation? What line appears to be a solution? Well, look at your differential equation here, your slope field rather. Uh, this one, right? That's a line. Uh, y equals two, I would say. Y equals two. Ah. What? I forgot to write equals two. Y go y equals two is a solution. I like that, so I'm gonna put an exclamation point. Y equals two is a solution. That's kind of neat. Now, what about the other types? I would say there are two other types. There appears to be one type that's kind of like increasing and concave up, and there appears to be another type that's gonna be decreasing concave down, right? Like we could just keep just keep going here and there. They're all very similar looking, but they work. Then increasing concave up, maybe go this way. They all seem to have y equals two as an asymptote, uh, but I would say that there are two other types. And maybe, maybe we should say two other types. We got increasing concave up, and we also have decreasing concave down. So all of this is a preview. Don't let this intimidate you. Later on, we'll come back to this and we'll do a lot with it. You're not gonna create slope fields like this very often. I mean, this, this has way too many points for it to be practical. By hand, by computer or calculator on the other hand, very practical. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop this video here. That's it, that's all of notes three. I'll be back in the next video, talk about notes four, which is probably about more calculus stuff. Um, so I will see you there.